Hey guys, before this one take, I just want to take a minute to talk to you about Autotempest.com. They've been a sponsor for a while, but even before that, we were using them to look through classified ads for cars because it makes searching so much easier than going to each site and typing in the same information over and over and over and over again. When I was looking for 240s and M3s, I got really sick of going to each site and typing in the make and the model and the transmission da, 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 and hitting enter and going to the next one and the next one. You don't have to do that with autotempest.com. It's so great. You just go to autotempest.com, you type in all the information, you hit search, and it brings up all the listings from all the most popular car classified sites to one page. It's great, and I am frankly surprised that more of you don't know it exists. Think of it like one of those bad dating shows where they put all the people in a cabin and they lock the door and they make them fight over roses, okay? In this case, the cars are the people the producers are autotempest.com. They push them all to you, and then you decide which one you're going to marry for a while until, like, the fame and fortune runs out or reliability becomes an issue or depreciation. This analogy got weird. Autotempest lets you find and compare cars from Autotrader, eBay Motors, and all of Craigslist. Lastly, Autotempest is completely free to use, which is why I like it, but they need word of mouth to grow. So if you like it and you know someone is looking for a car, tell them to check it out. It helps them out. It saves them a ton of time, and it's a great resource. Now, enjoy this one take. Morning, everybody. I uh, hope you're having a good one. Welcome to a canyon somewhere and a very interesting educational day because this is a modified Mercedes 190E. Um, with the 2.316 valve. If you if you saw the video I did with the bone stock American version or American import, no, sorry, American market spec car, uh, you know you'll see what we thought about it and and how that was. But uh, then uh, you emailed me and you were like, "Hey man, that's great, but this is a gray market import car and it's got 20 more horsepower." And you've done a bunch of cool stuff to it, and it's lighter, like yeah. by a, a huge margin. Yeah. So you said, "Hey, do you want to drive that?" And I said, "Yes, I absolutely <laughs> do want to drive it." So thank you very much for bringing it up, man. Yeah, I appreciate great. it. Um, so the, the the U.S. car we got was like 167 horsepower, yes, 3,000 pounds, depending on the options you got. But you know, you and Jason Camisa also said, "Hey, you really need to drive the Euro spec car. Yeah. It feels like a different thing." So yes. so tell people what this is and then what you did to it. So basically this is an 85 euro, um, they call it an ECE 190E 16 valve. And uh, the difference is it has 20 more horsepower, it's got a different ignition curve, different fueling system. Um, outside it looks identical to the US car, but the little mechanics is totally different, not the same parts. So you can't swap US parts into a Euro part they, and they, expect the same performance. They just don't fit. Where, they, they, fit. Sorry, they fit, but they fit, but they're they're like for instance the CIS injection, the, they're metered differently for the Euro cars to add more fuel uh -huh. because the higher compression, higher rev limiter, um, ignition curve is more aggressive. This actually has a adjustment knob depending on the fuel quality. So if you're using bad fuel you could turn the knob to decrease the timing accordingly. Whoa. Or increase it based on fuel. But you can't bolt that electronic system on from a, a Euro spec car to an American car? It won't work. You can attempt it, but uh -huh. it won't work correctly because it's basically all the electronics swapping over. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. So it's not going to talk to it the right way. Yeah. I'm sure there's some crazy voltage things going on. Yeah. And, oh, and different spec wiring. Man, that's, that's an interesting... Wow, that's an interesting bug you could accidentally put on your car, right? You're like, yeah. how come it's not working? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so tell tell everyone what you did, because you've done a bunch of like hot rodding stuff to this. So this is basically my toy car. Um, and my intentions was to make a uh, canyon runner slash track runner, just to have fun with it. And the budget is pretty much open to a point that seems reasonable. So... In it's the a motor. sliding scale. Definitely yeah, it is a reasonable. sliding scale. You get carried away really quick. Yeah, no kidding. So uh, the first thing is I want to see how much power can I actually get with the CIS system. So I started doing the simple stuff, bolt-on stuff. So we, I worked with a company called Stroma Engineering in Huntington Beach. He did a manifold back exhaust. Um, we did a header. Basically, we modeled it after the DTM header, which won't really work good for a stock motor because mm -hmm. it's just too big. And we modeled it after that 2.516 Evo header, 
and uh, equalized the runners better because they weren't equal from factory and we were able to get um, a flatter torque band more horsepower all the way across the entire rpm range okay that's all so very good yeah it's not just the peak number it's, right it's across the whole it's range. like that nice you know see the dyno yeah, graph goes like it's a shift this. yeah so we did that um port and polish valves valve springs everything in the intake is done runners throttle body and just some lightweight bits flywheel pulleys electric fan kit and so you kind of did you know it's it, you did motorsport stuff yeah and do you know where like do you know what um like what's your horsepower number now especially compared to the cranks, euro car? cranks about 210 so 185 euro crank it's uh 210 on this car okay Dyno. Okay. Um, and this was a gray market import in 85 right yeah so this is a euro spec car that you have then hot rodded so it's yeah euro plus yeah euro yeah plus technology euro, euro yeah. plus tech plus, yeah. we have plus technology all right that's pretty cool euro plus sounds like a bus company yeah. <laughs> That's what 
I hurt, which was a bummer, you know. I mean, that, that, it, that's one of the one of the instances where I. It's not that the grass is always greener. It's like the grass is definitely greener in Europe in that instance. Yeah. Um, I'm not that person who's like, why don't we get all of these cars that are, exist in Europe? Because we don't buy. You know, the enthusiasts that complain about that usually aren't buying the cars anyway. We get a lot of really cool stuff, but in this instance, we got a really hamstring car. And man, this thing just feels like... It's got a good sound. The shifter, nice, nice notchiness to it. So that's uh, due to solid shift bushings. Okay, Factory that's what ones are like. rubber, okay. and then uh, we have Delrin units that replaces all the rubber bushings. Ooh, yeah, Delrin's really, really yeah. hard, right? Um, I'm trying to like, I have to like remember which gear I'm in yeah, because yeah. the position is slightly different. It's like two, three. Well, for Canyon runs, there's on this car and this gearing with a 307, yep. you're usually in third gear. It, third gear feels like the right gear to be yeah, in. You, you don't really need to go to two. You rev it all the way up. You rev to seven. We're at six now. Yeah. Uh, man, this is real fun. This, the, this car feels totally different. Yeah. It's, it's a changed vehicle. It's a changed experience. I mean, between, have you done any like chassis bracing or anything? Or um, just suspension? No, no, just suspension. Okay. Really suspension. This really speaks to how strongly this car is built. I know that uh, some quick history for everybody, because I forget not everyone may have watched the other video. They were building this car to compete in WRC. So they spent a ton of money to, uh, that's the recording, yeah, to develop this tub. And then Audi came out with a Quattro and they went, oh, shit. Well, and then they pulled all the money out of the motorsport engineers kept working on it they did uh, a couple of stunts like they did the 50,000 kilometer endurance test at Nardo um, they set a bunch of speed records you know they, they campaigned three cars and then two of them lasted the whole time averaging like 150 miles an hour and then private teams started running them in DTM and they started doing well enough where factory sport came in later um, and it was the big rivalry with the E30 the E30 wouldn't exist if this car hadn't been built uh, but because they'd spent all that money building something that was going to need to withstand the forces of WRC work, you got a really good chassis, and then they just and they took the funding out late enough where like we all benefit from it. Yeah. And man, you can feel it. Like now that everything's all tightened down, like I can really feel it. We're going way far than the other car. Hey, if you're enjoying it, go. Dude, this it. is great. I mean, I, I gotta, I gotta think it's a new term. It's like I can't keep saying this is a totally different car, but it sounds good. It's way more responsive. Yeah. Um, is this a big enough turnaround? Oh, this has a very tight turning radius. So. It does. Yes. All right, because your car is pretty low. You know, I, I need to be nice to it. It doesn't rub. It doesn't rub. I have That's true. It hasn't turns. rubbed yet. Everything has to be functional. I mean, I, I don't want to worry about the little stuff. That is very smart. That is. I think something I learned in the many years of filming Tuned and, and Big Muscle is like, it's cool to build the car that wins the internet yeah. or like looks awesome or, you know, maybe works in a few environments. But if you want to drive your car to the canyon and have fun in the canyon and drive home, like you need all the stuff to work, you know? Wow, it just, it just sings. It feels super balanced too. Wasn't this like one of the more well-balanced four cylinders and it didn't use any counter shafts or something? Something like that. I mean, they, they kept revising the crank. When they went to the 2.5, it's a different crank. The Evo 2 was a different crank. So, they did some changes. I think, I remember reading, and, and I'm just taking someone else's words, but, you know, four cylinders can often require like a lot of balance shafts and things to get yeah. rid of vibration. And for some, for some reason, this did not need as many of them and it feels really smooth. It feels, it feels like an inline six. Yeah. It feels like an inline six. And it kind of sounds like one. This car actually vibrated more it's before. Create a place to park. It yeah. vibrated more before. Yeah, because uh, when it had more rotating mass as far as the drive line, like the flywheel and all that stuff. Right. There's more weight to shift around. Gotcha. When I eliminated as much as I can, it started to it could it rev faster out and more. smooth down. Yeah. Wow, man. Because you uh, in, in some cars, I know BMWs. Uh, if you put a lighter flywheel in, they can have problems with like chatter and idling. Yeah. Um, I know some people will comment like, that's fine, let me know if that's incorrect. But I remember Bill Caswell, 
who's done, he'd gone through a lot of flywheels and he's like, yeah, I just went back to OEM because they caused a problem. But this feels great. Yeah. Is your heater on? Heater is on. Oh, okay. Does it, does it need to be? It li I'm a little hot. I really, it was cold this morning when we came up. Man, I don't know where the limits of grip are on this thing and I'm not gonna find them, but this is such a fun driving experience. The biggest contribution to the grip would be the LSD. It's got a wave track diff. Oh, okay. So the factory diff is a clutch diff. Most of them get worn out and it takes a while for it to lock. Yeah. So this one, you can feel it. I mean, if you wanted to step out, you will step out on command. I would love to do that, but I'm not going no. to. You know, if, we, if we're up at this track side of Willow sometime, yes. then sure, but uh, I'm, I'm not gonna do that with this car. I love this interior, this uh, Panels are great, little like kind of houndstoothy looking. Yeah, they call it the houndstooth. That's fabric. the houndstooth fabric. It looks great. It makes nice contrast in here. The gauges are very like aeronautical. You know, they're yeah. they're super clear. I think uh, I think Harris just had a video up on Instagram of he was at that RM auction that was full of like awesome '80s and '90s cars. And uh, these aren't like the prettiest gauges in the world, but they're very clear, mm -hmm. and they they remind me of late '70s like the late 70s, early 80s cars that kind of just black with the little hashes on it. Uh, remind me of my dad's Volvo 1800 actually. Man, this thing just, it's like a slot car. It's just dice as corners. So you probably notice you're not on the brakes a whole lot. I'm not, I'm using a lot of engine braking. Yeah, it just slows out on its own. Yeah, it's got it's got a good amount of engine braking. It's not like a, you know such a light flywheel where it's doing nothing. I know I'm not also not pushing it like you know we're not braking at ten tenths like no and then turn it. You know I'm not trying to learn the limits of your car in the first twelve minutes. But I I have a new a new respect and a new idea of what these cars can do. I really really do. Yeah, they're very capable. Cool. All right, now we'll, now we'll slow down for tunnel noise. noise on that stock car were was really cool it was really cool and definitely the louder note but now this is this, this talks from talks from both ends you know like a like a night after bad mexican yeah, exactly. man and your and your brother was uh has my like brother a, Nino, he has a clone it's a clone of this car basically every part that i have in my car he has and it's just a u.s version Oh, okay, so his is a U.S. version. Has he done all the power mods as well? Definitely. So everything in the motor has been done, and the stigma was you can never get a U.S. motor to perform like a Euro car. Right. But it's not true. With the proper adjustments, you can get the okay. performance. Okay. So they drive identical. You know, I mean, hot riding is hot riding. You, yeah. you know, you open the airways up, you add some more spark, you add some more fuel, like, the engine's going to make more power. And if, yes. if, the, if the metallurgy is the same, and you can either get the parts, like the mechanical parts, not the yeah. electronic parts, and put those on, or make your own. It's gonna, and it, it, anything's going to make more power. Yes. Uh, but that's good to know. I think if everyone, if everyone hears, oh, the Euro car is the good one. You got to get the Euro car. Yeah. Well, now that market gets smaller, and, and everyone's, you know, going after the same pool. If you can get the American car, mm -hmm. and you know, spend some money to hot rod it out, and get the same driving experience that you have here. That's great. That's more people can enjoy what these cars are about. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's not going after the same like unicorn. I mean, yours is cool. It's got a stamp on the door uh, showing who who imported it in '85. Yes. And instead of the VIN, that's really rad. Yeah, because it has to be a private importer, not a dealer or a company. Right. Then it's got a separate bar sticker for spot purposes for California. Man, this and everything in here feels. Really, like, really solid, really new. Um, it pulls very slightly to the left. Yeah, I discovered that last night when I was driving around. I was like, wow, well, alignment. <laughs> You're like, perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, alignment is very important yes. and overlooked. I have to get um, new front control arm bushings, oh. and I'm like, oh, well, that means alignment after that. So, oh, old, an old Porsche. How very strange. Never see those in the canyons. Old turf. Old, yeah, no kidding. Uh, we saw one earlier. I think it was in... 
It's in the video of the, the Passat, the, the white one went by. Oh, it's yeah, like, I saw that thing go by. This is a great car. Really great car. And it, the way yours sits, um, and your brother sits, but like with these wheels, it's perfect. It, it, looks, it looks DTM. The fender flares are real small. They're almost more aesthetic than, I don't know if, if it actually widened like the interior flare, but they look great. Man, this is real fun. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed this it. This is real fun. Uh, I don't know what to say anymore. That was great. That was just like, this is like a nice dose of adrenaline. It's like slalom skiing just down in. <laughs> man, it's so, fuck, it's so stiff. Yeah. It's so stiff. And That's what she said, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's stiff enough that it doesn't jar you around, but it's got some gives, so if you were to hit a little dip or pothole, the suspension it will take it. Yeah, it'll soak it up. Okay. Um, this is a really smooth road. Um, but what I will say is there's one turn we went over that mm -hmm. I went over earlier today in a different video in that Passat, right, mm -hmm. which you think would soak it up, and that thing pogoed over that over yeah. that corner and this I didn't even notice it. Yeah. It didn't even it didn't even jump out whatsoever. It just doo -doo 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 -doo. Wow. Very impressive. Yeah. Really impressive. Thank you. This is cool. I get it now. Now now it all makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you get an idea. Yeah. I really get it now. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed learning about the 190E. If I know I missed a lot of information about what this car is about. If you want to get that, go watch the video of the stock 190E, which I will link to now in the uh, in the end card. I'll put it in the description too. And I, I talk about like the history and why they brought it here and what it meant for the uh, the S4 and, and the E30 M3 and all that stuff. Um, but thank you for bringing this, man. This was really cool, real impressive, and I I totally understand. I totally cool, understand. Cool. Thank you guys for watching. Um, check the links for below for podcast blip shift shirts, all that stuff, and uh, have a great day, dude. <laughs> Dude, fucking really impressive. Yeah, it's a cool car. Real cool car. Uh, the biggest... Uh, oh, we forgot to talk about you. have, like, no options in this thing. I'll just leave this running. Like, you didn't get a sunroof. So this was ordered, to my knowledge, as a base car. Um, so there's no power windows. There's no um, power sunroof is missing. Uh, the weird things, like the grab handle on the driver's side does not exist. Yep. Because um, your hand, your hands should be here. Should always definitely. be here. And then there is also a uh, courtesy light in the back that doesn't exist in this okay. car. That's, um, that's not very nice of it. Yeah, and that's a stupid uh, joke. <laughs> yeah, but it's no AC originally. Um, when I bought it, I had aftermarket AC and a bird's nest of wiring. That, oh man, took it out. Yeah. Okay. It never worked. Yeah, that's. Air, I feel like they didn't really figure air conditioning out until the, maybe the 80s. Yeah. And it, and it was still getting better in the 90s, and now it's fine. Yeah, now it works. Now it's it works great. It's reliable. Like, my Miata was a 95, and when I would turn the AC on, I was like, I think, I'm gonna, I think this will turn the engine off. <laughs> it just felt like so... You could just it feel the drag. Yeah. You could feel it. So, yeah, so you have like a super bare bones yeah, car. Basic, and, oh, basic. and what's the weight of this? You said with you so in it? So with me in it is 2749, and I'm wow. about 250 pounds, so... That's really light, because yeah. the stock car was like three thousand, I think. Yeah, they like started three thousand. American car. Yeah, American cars, it's three thousand, and it goes up from there depending on what you buy in the dealer. Right. If you get the power seats, yeah. and if you get the sunroof, yeah. which almost all of them came with. Uh, so like sound deadening on the Euro bumpers. cars, it's non-existent. Carpets are glued down. Where the U.S. car, there's a sheet layer of sound deadening, and then you can just pull the carpet out. Gotcha. Um, yeah. It's, wow. The doors originally don't have a. Uh, bar that goes across for side impact it's just kleenex yeah <laughs> it's it's just a shell Jeez. so when this car was imported that's one of the things that needed to be added to be federalized so they added the uh, side impact bars speedometer had to be updated to miles per hour mm -hmm. that's why that one's incorrect and uh that's pretty much it just emissions wow and okay. what's missing too is the uh, temp gauge so that was optioned out wow who would option out a temp i mean <laughs> who knows how cheap like, how much would that really cost? You're like, oh, I don't want to check that box. That's 12 bucks. Uh, I, yeah. I hey, in the 80s, strange. that 12 bucks must be... Good point. You know what? That's <laughs> 80s dollars. Fair point. 80s dollars, that's a lot of money. Yeah. You never know. Um, and I guess it is weird when you drive cars that they don't have a temp gauge. They just have a light that comes on, which, unless you're doing track work, like, that is really all you need. You yeah. need to know, Warning is lights. it too hot or is it too cold? Yes. You know, race cars have, like... Uh, Water temp light, oil temp light, you know, depending on, on what it is, it's just, 
the driver needs to be doing this and yeah. it just needs to go hey this is about to break and you go oh okay and you stop yeah my thing is as long as i can see the red and i can see the fuel gauge i'm good yeah another thing about your smaller wheels i can actually see the tack because uh that other car I yeah, couldn't see the it. speedo or the tack from. I mean, I, I, the speedo right now ends at 39 and it starts again at 110. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at least I can see the red of the tack. It does block it. But the driving position, I mean, it's really good for me and it's yeah. good for you. You know, we're we're pretty different heights, so cool. I would make that the end of the video. That was way more interesting. The only the only bummer is you've ruined the greatest back seats in the world. <laughs> oh, trust me, I've got. Uh the foams, the fabric to redo everything. So I, oh, I, I just meant like with the harnesses. Oh, they're blocking oh, yeah, what yeah, I think yeah. are some of the greatest back yeah. seats ever exist. It was. It became the function thing. I get it. <laughs> I get it. All right, man. That will make that the end of the video. That was. That was much better. Cool.